get it. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Dave from Double Attack here with you. Yes, sir. Uh, here to talk about the state of the Los Angeles Lakers after mm. Martin Luther Jr. Day and their victory over the Jags. We saw LeBron James have to apologize on Twitter to the fans about how the state of the season is going, what's going on with uh, their inefficiency and inconsistency this year. Mm -hmm. and then we find out after uh, the defeat of the Utah Jazz and defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert, that Frank Vogel is now on the hot seat and he's on a game to game basis to maintain his job. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Q? Um, for Vogel, it's, it's a thing, right? So he's coached some of the best defensive teams we've seen. Uh, mm -hmm. So respect to that. But I mean, I kind of get it on the hot seat, right? Uh, especially so you got LeBron on Twitter, like you said, in the social media time, it's really something interesting, right? The pressure that's put on organizations to get rid of coaches just based off of what they see, how fans are feeling about it. If you put it in, in respect, we're not even at the all-star break yet, right? Um, True. I saw mm -hmm. something the other day said that the Cleveland, you know, Kyrie Irving and LeBron James together were dang near a game off from what the start of the rest Westbrook Davis LeBron James time has been. They were 22, 23, 23, 22. Um, there was point. no panic button in Cleveland, right? Um, you talk about players being out, Anthony Davis being out for a while. Then, Le well, LeBron James out first. Then Anthony Davis, uh, you've got Westbrook's been about the only consistency. He's played the most games out of the whole trio, but I also get it because Frank Vogel has done a lot for defensive teams. The Lakers don't look like it. That's his thing. So that thing's not going right. And then you also say he's done that, but has he been able to pull off a chip when it came to those, those odds? I mean, he was on that Pacers team that was a really good, really, really good team. And, you know, unfortunately, their heel was that Miami Heat team. But one thing we've noticed from that Miami Heat team, they weren't unbeatable. So, you know, we could say, I'm not going to say LeBron James was his problem. It was the entire Heat team. Their big three coached by Eric Spolstra. Right, absolutely. And the advantage is that playing Chris Bosh at the five versus a Frank Vogel coach team brought you. And I think that's one of the elements that's going a little bit unnoticed here is we want to blame Frank Vogel for the problems. And yes, he is a defensive coach, but you didn't provide him with the defensive tools that he's used in the past, right? Instead of having the two big men that he's had before, he's dealing with Anthony Davis's injury and then trying to use makeshift Dwight Howard, DeAndre Jordan lineups. And now we're at the point where he's relegated to playing LeBron at the five. Mm -hmm. So the apology from LeBron, I don't think it's from LeBron, the player. He's having one of the best years of his career at 37, which is ridiculous. But it is LeBron, the GM, apologizing. Well, I think it's LeBron, the GM, and LeBron, the leader, right? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you, you know, to be the star, it's going to be on you. Yeah, and it should be. And it, it should also be on Russell Westbrook. Yeah. That's, that's the big deal, is that the uh, defensive intensity from Russell Westbrook isn't what we've liked to have seen. And, you know, a lot of people like Pat Bev you know get a bad rep because they're just running around and trying hard but i haven't even seen westbrook doing that you uh, know to be honest on defense i can't see i don't know if they're not trying hard if they're unable to try hard it's very weird right you see mm -hmm. when you watch their rotations you'll see okay let's say lebron or westbrook is on the wing playing defense a quicker guy boom blows by him right now normally big man's going to shift out the paint he's going to try to make a move to make the stop teams aren't kicking it to the big man for the bucket they're kicking it out to the three and the rotation is slow or not the rotation getting there. is slow. They're not closing out. They're not getting there. And in the West where teams are shooting threes, primarily that's the goal for majority of these teams is try to put up as many threes as they can. It's not going to yeah. work. It's not going to work. No. And when you're talking about the playoffs, that's not going to get any easier. Their top matchups are, are going to be against Phoenix, against Golden State. Utah. These teams are going to take advantage of every weakness on the floor. And we can't have Austin Reeves and Stanley Johnson as the high IQ players when they're under 25. This is a team, too, that, you know, although Anthony Davis losing him hurts, right? Because I guess you would say he's their Chris Bosh in a way, right? As a team yeah. would be coached. Yeah. But we've never seen Frank Vogel coach a team that's constructed the way this team is constructed. Um, and they seem to have no sense of urgency. And that's where I put the, the emphasis on the coach. There's no accountability. Um, one thing we see, we see a lot of I'm sorry tweets or little things like that. But you still don't see accountability from the players or the coach. Right. Yeah. 
like that's the part that's kind of weird to me. That's the part where I think you need a Tyron Lou, your Greg Popovich, your Eric Spoelstra. Like I will bench you if this yeah. man goes by you again. If the this man, problem. if I see you close out that slow again, you're just going to come out. What do I have you for? They're NBA players. Everybody can get buckets these days. Yeah, regardless of how much some person's making, like, you know, Westbrook's contract is one of the largest on the team, so they feel like maybe they can't sit him. That can't happen. No. Uh, you have to send a message to the rest of the team that we're not going to allow low IQ plays. We're not going to allow low effort plays. And especially when you're in a situation where – you're not stable. This is not a top five seed team. This isn't a team that's made the playoffs. This is not a team that won a playoff series last year. This is a team that is completely evolved from their championship team. They have to get back any sort of chemistry. And the accountability should come first from Vogel. I haven't heard Vogel say, hey, this is my fault. Hey, these are the things we need to work on to make us better. What I've heard is, oh, when AD gets back, when we get our chemistry together, when guys get healthy. And it's a lot of excuses kind of kicking the can down the road here. And now we're at the point where it's less than a month till the trade deadline. And now shit has hit the fan. Are you guys going to continue to play with this roster and inevitably lose because this roster is currently constructed, can't win. Or are we going to rely on people who have not been able to execute this year? Or we have to play Austin Reeves 35 minutes of playoff game, and we know how that's going to go. And, and that's the bad part about it is, right, trade deadline's coming up. If you hit the panic button and it's not the players, then what? I mean, the players take a part of that. They take a piece of the game. They're going to take some of the blame. But mm-hmm. if you hit the panic button now, you remember out in Houston last year, they were struggling. Or Atlanta, my bad. You remember Atlanta was struggling in the beginning of the season. You removed right. the coach. You learned it wasn't the players in that scenario. It was the coaching. It was mm-hmm. the game plan and the effort that was given. So yeah, now you say, the finals. Yes, yeah. Because, you know, we, we there's a lot of talk about Westbrook's three-point shooting. And that's it's, it's kind of getting overused now. It's like an excuse for ESPN and TV shows to use as a way so they don't have to really break down his team. When realistically, like, no, I don't know. We've, we've seen this man have success everywhere, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Even in Washington, the issue in Washington the first half of the season wasn't his shooting. It was the fact he wasn't shooting enough. He was trying yeah. to be the Russell Westbrook everybody wanted him to be. When he was mm-hmm. the West Westbrook, he has always been in that second half of the season. And him and Bill was like, we're taking 80% of the shots. The rest of you don't want to make it. We're going to take it up. Yeah, they and they carry the and they, they carried yeah. them to the playoffs so that the, the player is there the scheme is not the mm. effort is not these things mm. and you know it, it may be firing the coach that's got to do it and obviously players are going to call it but Vogel just might not be the one he has not been able to get it done at a high level time and time again he's created some of the best okay teams we've seen <laughs> yeah the best middle average <laughs> yes. That we've seen you're right and and like playing like that we saw david black get fired for it you mm-hmm. brought up the Kyrie point and he got the full season but with the injuries they told him to take a hike yeah so why does frank vogel get a pass because of anthony davis's injury and you have lebron agreeing to play center he's changing everything about his game which honestly let's be real it's, this this is one of the best things that could have happened to lebron yeah. especially in an era where the physicality is lesser yes and now, he doesn't well, have to run as much this is honestly a resting situation for him on defense Exactly. And I agree with that. But then you, you look at how they take advantage on offense, which I think leads to the defensive problem yeah. because you're allowing position buckets. And not only that, but you're not getting second chance points with LeBron at the five. One, one issue and one thing that we talk about pretty often is how Westbrook has kind of always relied on the Westbrook assist, which is I'm going to fly to the basket as soon as I like possibly can, as fast as I can. And if I break, at least I'm taking my man with me for the easy offensive rebound and put back. That's not happening without without Dwight on the court. It's not happening with LeBron on the court. And so they can, they need some bounce. Um, one of the interesting players I think that's available is uh, Nick Claxton yeah. from, from the Nets. I think that's a reasonable addition that would pay dividends. They because, need a hustle player. They need yeah, they need players. hustle players. And switchability is a big thing. Because Dwight gets played off of the floor because are you going to go out to the paint? No. The young bigs are, are really the difference maker in that. And we saw that a little bit with Harold uh, when he was with the Lakers as well. So uh, I think it's partially uh, Frank Vogel and getting everyone to execute in terms of buying into his system. But he also doesn't have the pieces for his system to work. And knowing and that. As a, and as a coach, I mean, I think we learned this over time. The system has to change. 
You can't right. do what you did in Indiana. Like Phil Jackson couldn't do in New York what he could do in LA. Things change. Uh, the personnel change. Um, and you're playing with a team like, so best case scenario, you're talking about playing LeBron at the center. They have him at the center and they're still not running. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. Their yeah. fast breaks don't look anything like you imagined when you said we're going to put you and Westbrook on the floor together. Like I imagine guys flying down the court, Malik Monk, Stanley Johnson. I imagine guys, the rebound comes down and they are the other way. You don't see that. It's it come down and they're walking up the court for these breaks. Either that or if they, unless they chuck it up. That's the only thing you're going to see. Yeah, it's either a cherry pick or we're going to casually stroll and that's not going to cut it. It's not going to cut it. Not in regular season where you need easy buckets just to survive. It's, and the real question that we have to ask is, is age the problem for all of them now? Because these young teams, while LA is still putting up 100, 112, 120, and they're losing games. And it's almost like these teams are saying, that's cool, but we're going to run you down till you're tired. And you, in the fourth quarter, the Lakers fold. They play two to three good quarters of basketball. They're not getting blown out in the first. They're not getting blown out in the second quarter. It's the end. It's about the last three minutes of the third quarter and forward. Teams start to pull away from them. So now you ask yourself, maybe it's time to sit mellow a little bit. Maybe it's time to yeah. sit. Maybe it's time to limit. Uh, I mean, you hate to say you can't limit LeBron too much because he is a staple of the team, but maybe it's time to start giving some of these young guys some more clock and let them run the floor because these, these I hate to call them old guys, but they're gassed out there right now. This isn't like Boston when they created their big three when there they were older, but the game hadn't sped up quite that way yet. No, that's true. And then playing with Doc Rivers' team, they their thing was not um, get offensive rebounds. Just go ahead. If you miss the shot, get back get on back. D because we care more about limiting the other team's transition buckets yeah. because we know we're slow and old. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing we got to see is, Basically, on this roster, I think that Austin Reeves, Stanley Johnson, Malik Monk, those yes. three have to stick around yes. in terms of the young guys. Outside of that, everybody's on the block. This kind of answers what people said, too. I mean, the initial trade to get Anthony Davis, a lot of the complaint was that you get rid of too much young talent too fast. And, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you get LeBron James on your team, you turn into, like, a try-to-win-now team. But – you know, if Anthony Davis cannot stay healthy, which I said this, I think I said this, our first show, yeah. what is going to be the issue? You got an older yeah. LeBron James and, and a broken, a, a broken 16 times over Anthony Davis. And I said it the first day, if they have to play 82 games, Anthony Davis won't make it. It happened in the playoffs and it's happening now. Everybody, as a Lakers fan, I love that we got the championship in the bubble, but that was not a realistic representation of what the Los Angeles Lakers are in an 82-game season. No, it was a hot month from 80. It was a hot month. You got arrested Anthony Davis and arrested LeBron James versus the rest of the league, arrested Dwight Howard. You know, a lot of these things came into play that people aren't accounting. The thing about a ship is you had to play 82 games just to get a chance to play about 30 more. <laughs> you see what I'm yeah. saying? And Absolutely. we cannot do that with the way this team is constructed. You go into a seven-game series with these guys, they got to close teams out. If they and can't close a team out fast. I don't think 48 minutes LeBron can do it for – for four seven game series in a row. And then if you have to account for the play in games, if they're not a high enough seed as well, that's just asking too much. So yes. I think the, the time for a change is now in terms of coaching, in terms of the roster, I think there, it has to be kind of from the top down. And so uh, my final verdict is that Frank Vogel will probably not make it to the playoffs. Honestly, I don't think he should. I think the time you, you wait too long to pull the plug, you're giving false hope. Mm. Pull the plug. Very. Just pull the so, plug. What's the worst that happens right now? Yeah, you're in the same spot that you're at right now. You, really. you pull the plug at All Star break. Your team has so much less time to get acclimated to the new system, to the new coach, to the new way they're right. going to play. Pull the plug. If you don't believe in it, which it shows they don't, make a call. Yep. So tell us in the comments what you guys think what's the verdict on frank vogel should he stick around and be the lakers coach or are they toast if they keep him there 
Um, we personally think it, it's time for a change. The Lakers can't win as currently constructed, but we'll be following their storylines as we approach the trade deadline and uh, what they're going to do because GM LeBron is not going for it. No, I mean, I wouldn't go for it. Look at all the guys we let go right now thriving in the NBA, right? Thriving. Caruso, KCP, Harold, Brandon Ingram, Kuzma, Kyle uh, Kuzma, Lonzo Ball, Julius Randle. The list goes on. <laughs> you know, let us know, let fans, how you guys feel. Let out your frustration in the comments, and we'll catch you next time on Double Take. All right.